After the war, Valesa dedicated her life to philanthropy. She helped the people of Maseo move on from the Triumvirate. Undoing some of the damage her parents had done was her new calling. As pirates, they inflicted wounds upon the culture and people of Maseo. Being their daughter, she felt qualified to try and make up for what they did, and so she would go down in history as one of Maseo's greatest public figures. She didn't ignore Valinorth, however, and still paid frequent visits. Trusting Fortem to take care of her home, she did the same for Maseo. Together, they helped ensure that both nations lived strong and in harmony. Each year, she'd place flowers on Salberg's spirit idol. This was to remember you and the idol that empowered you. You were never forgotten, not by her or by the world you served. For as long as she lived, she did this every year, her love unwavering. Known as a strong woman, this was the only time she shed a tear. Tales of her dedication to your love would live on after her passing. Because of your efforts and choices, Valesa survived. When the whole world stood against her, she faced it and prevailed. You gave her a gift of a happy, peaceful life, one not lost to senseless war. Fortem returned to Valinorth and took on the role of Elder. He stayed true to his word and united his nation with the rest of Alestia. At the loss of some culture, Valinorth merged with the monarchy for good. A small price to pay, many would say. Valinorth let go of its dead beliefs. No more spirit realm. No more seers. Valinorth was just like every other nation. Trade routes were opened, and Valinorth was no longer closed off to outsiders. In a way, his nation became almost an extension of Maseo. Upon his passing, he left behind the world he dreamed of creating, a unified Alestia, each nation resting on another for strength and purpose. He never got over the loss of his best friend, however. The day of your death became a day of festivities for Valinorth. They celebrated the gift of life that you gave to the rest of Alestia. On this day, many flowers would line the streets to your home. Fortem still came over every day, keeping your house in tip-top shape. He says it's what you would have wanted. He never stopped honoring your memory. Fortem survived the war, despite all odds. His strong love for everything around him kept him afloat. When all hope was lost, he stood up and challenged death in the face. And for that, he was never forgotten. Living a long and full life, he was happy. Alestia was forever better because of him. Though Pro was lost during the war, his writing endured and created a legacy. He had the most detailed records of the rebellion and wrote about almost everybody. Everything you could possibly want to know down to the smallest detail had been written. His work went down in history as one of the most detailed records of wartime. Every soldier, their likes and dislikes, their daily routines, he had written it all. Grieving friends would use these texts to keep the memories of their loved ones alive. It was reported that a man and woman resembling Pro were seen in his memorial. However, they disappeared as quickly as they had come never to be seen again. But the most popular of his writings was about you, the monarch. The world would remember you for an eternity and the sacrifice you made. Your name became a symbol of hope, giving light to anyone in dark times. To Pro, it was important that you were remembered as a person first and a hero second. To this end, he stayed true to his methods, choosing to write about your day-to-day -day life Though you were remembered as a hero, people realized at heart that you were the same. Pro's identity as the mole within the rebellion never came to light. However, even if it did, he had done enough to make up for his actions. Many aspired to write like him, but none could achieve such prowess. After the war, Ulrich did his best to assist the throne and serve the monarchy. 
There was much to take care of, and things were chaotic after the fog of war settled. But he was up to the task, and he did everything in his power to make the world a better place. Having lost Vivian in the war, Ulrich stood up and took his place as ruler of Alarinthia. Because he was Vivian's champion and survived, he did have a claim of leadership. Balancing his new duties in Balteus and Alarinthia, his life was busy and impactful. With your sacrifice, there was nobody left to lead Alestia. Ulrich, stepping up, took on the role of first king of the monarchy. His goal was clear, to educate the world on the new status quo. People slowly learned and adjusted to news of the Triumvirate's fall, but with many years of hard work they had come to enjoy Ulrich's rule. Alestians lived in peace, never fearing what their rulers may do to them. He had a statue of you erected in the town square of Balteus. You would forever be remembered as the first monarch, a hero. Every ruler in the future would owe their power to you and your sacrifice. He served Alestia for an eternity because of the curse of immortality upon him. Over time, he became known as the Immortal King of Alestia. An interesting title. The people didn't complain about this, however. He was seen as a great ruler. He started to enjoy life and no longer sought to have his curse removed. Thanks to your efforts, Ulrich was able to live a happy life, free from the Triumvirate. The shadows of his past soon dissipated, and he turned into a new man, truly loved by the people. Though his secrets never came to light, he had certainly done enough work to make up for them. After the battle for Alestia, Damek had a lot of work to do. Going from a member of the Rebellion to a leader in the monarchy was a huge change. He was no longer part of a small army. His actions affected the entire world. Because of your sacrifice, the surviving forces were in a state of disarray. However, this was put to rest when Ulrich stood up and assumed the role of king. Damek immediately pledged loyalty to his childhood friend and served his new king. But he never forgot about you and what you did in order to secure victory. He used you as a guide on what to do and was known as kind and honorable. That was his way of honoring your growing love, using your ideals as inspiration. He remained in his role as advisor, just under Ulrich's leadership instead. Honoring your appointment, he served in this capacity until the end of his days. His bond with Ulrich stayed as strong as ever, and they always saw eye to eye. Thanks to your efforts, Damek was able to live a long, happy life. He served the throne for the rest of his life, remaining forever loyal. The tale of how far he'd come would go down in history and become legend. Sophie's past crimes were pardoned posthumously, and he was labeled as a hero. His defection from the Triumvirate and his advice regarding them were seen as invaluable. Were it not for his actions and his change of heart, the war would have been lost. A memorial service was held, and almost every surviving member of the rebellion attended. Even Ulrich showed up. He was happy knowing that his friend had finally redeemed himself. His story would go down in history, teaching people that nobody is beyond a second chance. Howell survived the war, despite several grievous wounds. His body mended them with ease and his life continued as normal. He dedicated his life to assisting the throne and recording history. But not current history. He wrote about the old monarchy and their ways. It was almost as if the spirits inside him felt regret at their actions. Nobody knew why Howell had this change of heart, but it was for the better. However, he chose to write about you and your sacrifice as well. In his eyes, you were an extension of his kind as well, and very important. He called you the bridge between worlds and attributed victory almost entirely to you. Thanks to your efforts, Howell was able to live a happy life. He was rarely seen outside of the castle and mostly stuck to writing. But to him, 
it was worth it in order to teach the world more about his kind. Aaron personally oversaw the transition of his home from a tavern to a barracks. He wanted to ensure that during the switch, things still met his standards and regulations. Peregrino became a source of immeasurable military might, and Aaron oversaw all of it. Though conflict was rare, Peregrino remained as the first line of defense to protect Valinorth. Aaron realized that he hadn't lost his home at all, for home was where he and his friends resided. He lived the rest of his days in this new barracks, a proud servant of the new monarchy. This is where Milas settled down, unable to decide between Maseo and Valinorth. He lived a happy and peaceful life, choosing how his remaining days played out. Being free to choose what happened to him, he was never bound by duty again. Though Alex perished in Balteus, his treaty was posthumously honored. All trade bans were lifted, and pirates were officially employed by the nation. The Mazean Shipping Company, along with Mazeo, entered a new age of prosperity. All criminal records were lifted, and every pirate was free to enter society as an equal. Imprisoned pirates were released as well, uniting families that had been torn apart. This would go down in history as one of the biggest and greatest changes to Alestia. Neda was never seen again. It was assumed that she didn't agree with these changes. Or perhaps she was spiteful that you didn't choose to align with her demands. Either way, Alestia would forever remember her as a ruthless pirate lord. Grizz was a casualty of this ruthless war, but his legacy lived on. Stepping up as mayor of Mazeo, Lilith continued what he started. She honored the pirate treaty and helped Mazeo adjust to every change. A small ceremony was held to mourn and honor the sacrifice of your created seers. Though their life on Alestia was short, they had completed enough to be known as heroes. But many wondered what would have happened if they survived. Could their minds have been saved? Because Vivian had perished, Ulrich stood up as his champion. He helped ensure that Alarinthia remained on the path of the victorious party. Soon enough, it changed its ways and existed in unity with the new monarchy. Trade routes were introduced and its ports were open to everybody. A representative of the monarchy was elected to lead the nation into a new age. Holding a ball every year, Alarinthia kept up its tradition of giving back to the people. One thing was for sure, Alarinthia would never be in the hands of the strong again. Though Vivian wasn't alive to enjoy this new nation, his story would live on for an eternity. Shane was never seen again after that fateful encounter in Balteus. He is presumed dead, and many refuse to speak about his betrayal. If he survived, he went to great lengths to remain hidden from the world. When the chaos and confusion settled down, Halen seemed like a new man. He likened his existence to that of a spectator watching a performance. No matter what he wanted to do, his body could not defy his masters. He decided to atone for what he had done and joined the new monarchy. Of course, many people were apprehensive about accepting his aid. Over time, they learned to accept him and his desires as genuine. His job stayed largely the same ensuring that Alestia's rulers remained in power. But with new masters and even new friends, he took pride in being on the right side. With the dark idol gone from Balteus, the corruption slowly waned. Over the next several decades, it made a complete transformation. Many would call it the most beautiful place in all of Alestian history. Its name was changed to New Balteus, and left behind its old roots. No longer would it be known as the seat of the tyrannical triumvirate. People would see it as the place where Alestia was changed forever. People would come from all over the world to see the home of the new monarchy. It became a symbol of new beginnings, teaching people that change is always possible. As the corruption slowly disappeared, 
people settled down and turned it into a prosperous nation. You were successful in your aspirations. You left behind an entirely changed world. The members of the rebellion that survived had a new, even bigger journey before them. It was time to lead the world into the bright future you secured. For them, work had only just begun. Thank you for your service, Monarch. For everything you've done, you will never be forgotten. My vision fades in, and I feel incredibly confused. With everything that just happened, I should definitely be dead. Actually, maybe I was. Far be it from me to decide what death brought. I know that I'm in my house. That much is easily discernible. After rising up to a sitting position, though, I noticed something shocking. The lower half of my arm is still missing. Could I have survived? No, that was impossible. What's going on exactly? My mind starts to fill with possibilities. There's a knock at my door. I'm filled with fright, but then a moment later, I hear a familiar voice. Hey, open up. I rush through the door and Fortem steps inside my house. My heart is beating so fast, then joy overtakes me. I give Fortem a big hug, and he seems surprised. Did you just wake up? Oh jeez, hope we won't be late. Don't tell me you forgot what day it is. Huh? It's the anniversary of your induction. If we don't hurry to the town square, we'll be late. Salas is already under enough stress having to train Milas. Salas is live? So come on, we need to get going. Your parents are counting on me, Seer. I told them to give me 10 minutes tops. My parents? I'm in complete shock and I stand there, dumbfounded. Small eternity passes before Fortem breaks the silence. Well, don't just stand there. You need to get ready. At this rate, you'll be greeting the townspeople in your underwear. I mean, you can if you want to. But I really don't recommend that. I don't know what's going on. Am I in a new reality? The Elder is alive as well as my parents. And I've been inducted? This means that the Rebellion was never formed. There was no occupation. Steers start streaming from my eyes and I give Fortem a bigger hug. I don't know what happened exactly, but I'm not about to question it. If this was a reward for my journey and sacrifice, then it was worth it. Whoa, hey, calm down. I cry even harder, and Fordem can't help but show worry. Hey, wait. Are you okay? Nope. I nod and tell him that everything is fine. And this time, something tells me it will stay that way. Well, that was quite, um, quite the game. Or rather, I kind of don't want to call it a game because, um... The only visual novels that I really considered to have some st a substantial enough gameplay to uh, actually call them games rather than just choose your own adventure stories. Like, I'm talking about games like Phoenix Wright or Danganronpa. So it's really hard to define this as a game. M more like, again, a choose your own adventure kind of deal. But I'll judge it the same way regardless um at the end of every let's play i like to do these little um reviews that <clears throat> reviews just to give everyone um my own uh, opinion about this game story-wise i sort of like it it's not the best but i guess it's good enough see the characters are really great and lovable but for the most part, you only really connect to them via optional heart-to-hearts. Aside from the heart-to-hearts, they're just sort of 
there, and I blame that for the reason why I never really connected to um, Ulrich and Pro, because I've never done their heart-to-hearts like the other characters. Um, and it doesn't really work well, work well, because I don't think that you should rely make a game where the player has to rely on optional cutscenes just to um, get to really know the side, the main characters. Uh, Shane and the Triumvirate, we, I've already gotten a huge rant about them, especially Shane. I just don't think that they're very well written. And when you really ignore uh, Shane, the Triumvirate, and um, in those heart-to-heart -heart scenes, it's really just a typical war story that just happened to have furry characters. So I really can't, so unfortunately, Clay's, I can't really give the story that high of a score. Only a 6 out of 10. Not a terrible story, but not one that is really good. I'd say more like etiquette. Music how and art on the other hand, I'll give higher scores. The music has a great atmosphere and the songs do great on their own. Um, the problem is is that I've learned very early on that the volume seems to vary throughout the game, alternating between um, hard to hear to overwhelming and I've really had to um, occasionally adjust the volumes just to uh, make sure that I can hear everything because the default volume setting, which was the max, completely overwhelmed, uh, overpowered some of the characters and the particular loud music, which I don't know. I love the music, but it's just not. I don't know. I just don't think that it's, um, like trying to think of a word to describe it. I think that the biggest problem I have is that it tends to overpower everything else. Especially um, in the parts of the game where you have lyrics playing over the gameplay. The lyric, I find, I'm actually completely against um, lyrics in video games, with the exception of maybe the title screen, certain cutscenes, or the credits. Otherwise, it's just, otherwise listening to the lyrics just tend to be distracting. That aside, I really like the music. If you listen to the music on, I took the time to listen to the music on their own, and I love it. 7 out of 10, with most of the points taken out simply because of how it's used. Art, the backgrounds are very beautiful. I love the painting aesthetic. Foreground characters are also very well designed. Both are very detailed. Um, I've only ha I very have I have very little um complaints about it. The only complaint that I have is really um um the clipping of Vivian's wings and certain character models, which I guessing that they probably just didn't have time to fix, or maybe it's something completely else. I don't know. I wasn't part of the team that made the game, so. But that's actually very, very nitpick. The only other nitpick I can say is that it's just the overused uh, manga style that I see everywhere. But then again, that's also just nitpicking. That, aside from just a couple nitpicks, I have very little to say against the artwork. Art, I give that an 8 out of 10. Which brings this game to an overall, or rather, the choose your own adventure because I again it's really hard to call this a video game if there's not a whole lot of um, actions like in Phoenix Wright or Danyarampa so so this thing I'll give it a solid 7 out of 10 did I enjoy doing this game yeah absolutely I absolutely loved in doing this game um, do I plan on doing other playthroughs just to see what I have missed or take alternate paths of course, and I'll record that all for you, but not at the very moment. I kind of want to move on to other projects. With that said, I have nothing else to say. I hope you enjoyed this Let's Play as much as I enjoyed playing it for you. See you guys in the future projects. <laughs>